Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. And for all you new people out there, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. We appreciate it, and it's free. So today we're going to... What are we working on today, boss? Today we're working on a lawnmower that has been sitting for like over a year, and it won't start, of course. And we're going to start with the fuel system and work our way back until we get the thing running. Well, what do you think? Can I help today? No, I'm sorry, you can't help. This one's on the floor. You can help on the countertop, but when you're on the floor, you get stepped on, and you know how bad that hurts. Well, there you go. But what are you going to do? So let's get started on that mower and see if we can't figure out what's wrong. With these quantum motors, the first thing I'll do is pull the top off every time, because if you don't have a primer bulb, that means you're going to have two sets of linkage, and this top's going to be in the way when we open it. Let's pull the air cleaner off. Air filter doesn't look too terribly bad, but it's not great either. We'll probably put a new air filter on it before we're done. Let's go ahead and pull the air base off. Now, the one thing you got to love about working on a quantum motor is we're using a I believe a quarter inch. Yep, we're using a 5 16 bit, and that's the only thing we've used so far. We used a Phillips to take this off, and a 5 16 to take all these off. Now, the only thing holding this on is this little breather tube. So, let's go ahead and pull the carburetor off. First thing we're going to do is pull this top linkage. And remember, get that picture before you start doing the linkage. That could save your life later. Where you at? There you are. Okay, we'll take that. So we'll pull this off. And note how this moves nice and freely. And that it pivots this. This is your choke mechanism. That, that's your, uh, that primes your carburetor when it's cold. And that's all you have to do. Now you can leave this off to the side and just leave it there. If you jiggle that around too much, it's going to be real hard to get it back in place. I've had somewhere I've had to take this whole cover off just to get this lined up again. So now we'll pull the bolts off. Now the next thing we're going to do is kink the gas. So that we don't lose any gas while we're doing this. Now we'll have a little bit come out. Oh, have it right like that. We'll have a little bit come out, but not enough to matter. Get this out of the way. Now we use our needle pliers to clear that out. Get the gas line off the machine. And this is where we start dripping gas. And you want to do this before you take this off. But do be careful because this linkage here is easily broken. And after the mower's been sitting around for a little while, it's pretty fragile. About every third one of them breaks, and I end up buying a carburetor just for the linkage. And if we've got the right size gas line, yeah, now we'll ease that off. Take the linkage off. And again, remember, take, take pictures when you're doing this because it's easy to forget later how it went together. There you go. That gas line's leaking a lot. So to stop the leak for the moment, since we didn't get a real good pinch apparently, I'm going to go ahead and put something in the line. And that'll take care of it. So let's take the carburetor over to the bench and see what we've got. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and take the bowl off. And you'll get a little bit of a gas here. That bowl doesn't hold much, so I use that to clean the bench usually. And I noticed while I was carrying this carburetor, carburetor over, somebody autographed it. Which means this thing's already been off once, or at least once, I should say. But on an older mower, I suppose that's a given. There's the 
There's our jet, and our jet looks pretty bad. We look inside it. We've got green gas and sorts of whatnot here, all sorts of corrosion. That means the gas is unusable. We're going to have to throw the gas away that's in it now. It could be wrong, but it almost looks like they put two cycle mix in this fuel. If they did that, we've got a 50 50 shot that the engine's done. Now, if your needle sticks like this, that's not good. I almost never see them stick. Yep, and we're not going to rebuild this carburetor. When you look inside here, you got a considerable amount of corrosion. So, I'm not sure what life this has seen, but it's probably a rough one. Let's see what we've got. And lucky for us, we've got a brand new carburetor sitting here. Good to go. So let's go ahead and move forward with that one. After seeing the inside of that carburetor, I know it's a complete disaster in there. Not going to bother with it. Just going to put a new carburetor on. First thing we're going to do is drain the gas. I don't know what's in that gas, but I'm sure I don't want it in this engine. We'll probably have to put a new fuel line on just because it's a good idea. Now, interesting enough, the gas doesn't look good. It looks yellow, but it doesn't look anything like what was in the carburetor. Okay, now that we've got the gas mostly drained, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and pull the fuel line off, and we'll use the old fuel line to measure for the new fuel line. And we can reuse these clamps. Clamps are okay, but what you'll hit on these old, old systems is the fuel line itself will break down inside and make the float stick. So even though it's not sticking now, that doesn't mean it won't later. So now we're going to use that for a measurement. Cut it right there. And then we'll pull the clamps off the old line. And scoot them over to the new one. With new fuel line, the clamps are a formality. It fits nice and snug. And you don't have to worry about any deterioration on the inside of the hose affecting your new carburetor. Or your old carburetor if you're, uh, if you're rebuilding it. So this part's important. If you took pictures and paid attention and you're taking it apart, put it back together the same exact way. I reached for this, but we actually have to do this part first. Because the fuel line won't let us stretch to, to do that. Do that very carefully. Now I'll put the fuel line on. With the quantum motor, you do it in this order. Because everything's just tight, the fuel line is difficult to put on once you've got the whole thing in place. So now, we get our linkage out of the way. And ease it back into place. And put our two screws in, and then we'll put the other linkage on. Now, your rubber O-ring here is what provides your seal. You don't have a traditional gasket on this one. There's 
one started. And always get both bolts started before you tighten one down. And this applies to any job, any mechanical job. And there we go, our new carburetor is in place. Let's tighten our fuel clamp back on. And then we'll put our top linkage on. See, this should still be wiggling free. As you can see, it is. So we'll start our nut. There's kind of a loop in here, a little rectangle box that goes over a part that loops into it. So if it comes out of that, it can be a real pain in the neck to get back together. Like I said, I've had multiple cases where I had to take the top off the motor just because I made that mistake. Okay, couldn't find the socket for a second, or the bit. Now this should move freely. Feels pretty good. So. Let's go ahead and try to start her now. We'll put some new gas in it. Let's see what we got. Whoa. I'll pour a little bit on the outside of the mower. That'll give me fluid to clean the mower later. And of course, I'm kidding. That wasn't intentional. Okay, let's put the gas cap on and give her a pull. Let's see what we've got. Hey, you, you'll always hear people say they have to wait for it to prime and everything, but with the way these systems work, as we speak, that carburetor is filling up with gas, so it shouldn't take more than one or two pulls for this thing to start. Now, I always tell people, if it doesn't start the first time, I'm not done working on it. So, let's go ahead and put the covers back on and put a new air filter in her. And she's just about done. Let's take her outside and run her and see if the self-propelled works, pulling the motor forward. That one came and went pretty fast. When I opened up that carburetor and saw that wildlife inside it, I just decided sometimes a carburetor is just not worth rebuilding. That one would have spent probably 15 cycles through the ultrasonic, and it's just not worth the effort. Carburetor for that, even a Briggs & Stratton OEM carburetor, is under $30. So we went ahead and put a new carburetor on it, started right up, and started first pull, just like you'd expect him to start. And the gentleman's gone. He's got his mower, and he's happy. Well, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. As always, we appreciate it. We'll see you next time. <laughs>